welcome to TLC for the Soul podcast, where soul meets spirit. You have entered into sacred space. I'm your host, Tammy Lynn Chambers, and I'm here to help you shine. Now let's get going on this podcast journey. Hello friends, hello and welcome to the show, yet another episode, this one focused on the week ahead for the week of May 8th, so I was looking at the calendar, so we have a lot going on this week and I'd like to bring in a couple of different things for this session. We're going to be um, clearing our energy first, doing our card reading, and then we're going to be doing a little shamanic Reiki. So let's get settled in. If you're new here, welcome. Welcome to our show. And, you know, settle in. See if you vibe with our tribe. If you're a returning friend of the family, of the TLC for the Soul family, welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me here yet again. The light is so bright. The light is so bright right now. So we're going to talk all about this week. Um, there's a lot going on. Hmm. I'm going to pull some cards and I don't know. Let's just see what else comes up. So settle in. First of all, let's get us all in our juicy sacred space. Come out of your mad your come out of your magical reality and join me in mine. As I wrap us all in love light and light love, inviting in the guides who overlight this show. Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, Pleiadians. Let's light our transformation candle. bright yellow happy candle and we'll see if anything fun shows up in the wax so usually there's like as it burns you know I'll see different things in the candle or the flame maybe giving us a little message so let's set our intention if you're working with your guides now now's the time to open up your master ears and master eyes. And, whoa! <laughs> Did you see that? It had like a poof and some black smoke came out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. Invite in any guides who you'd like to work with to help you with any messages. Take a look at the candle within and around. See if you see any messages for yourself just in looking at it. <clears throat> I will say, yeah, it does kind of look like castle walls in a way. Like you're this bright flame, but there's still some walls up. So... After it burns for a while, it will the walls, will, the little tower walls, will start to come down. So we will set that there. So let's go ahead and get into a receptive space before we just jump into reading things. I am going to just clear your energy, clear our energy a little bit. We're just using this little rattle, kind of more of a shamanic clearing than smoke. I'm just going to around your energy field. Now this is also all part of the Reiki coming through, the quantum energy healing coming through. Um, before I do that any further, it's like multi-dimensional, right? So it's not just a rattle. It could be the Reiki coming through. Um, it could be the animal medicine. We are gonna be working with some animal totems today. It could be my voice. It could be the 
vibes coming through my eyes or whatever. So this is multi-dimensional healing, but you have to kind of be open and receptive to it before it just, you know, comes in. So go ahead and let, what is with the changing of the hands? I don't know what that's all about. Go ahead and just, you know, best to just take a couple of deep breaths. Breathing in love and breathing out love. Breathe in love. Breathe out love. Breathe in love. Breathe out love. Oh yeah, look. <laughs> I'm like, okay, your energy's good. No. <laughs> it's just gonna we're just gonna keep working with that. But I do see this month's cat calendar plays kind of plays into this reading. They're saying that's why they won't let me focus on it because <laughs> I think this is how we're feeling. I know I am, but I think some of you too may be feeling like this. So it's a black cat and he or she or it, they are laying on their like their book of shadows and their spell books and and their map. Um, it's a map like rolled up like a scroll and that candle, which is also to me looks a lot like the flame that we saw in this candle. And they're just kind of like staring longingly at that. And so... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that's all about. It's like longingly waiting for something. And this week, um, the guys are saying, is a turning point um, for many of you. So we have a Mercury retrograde. We've already been in the shadow of Mercury retrograde. Um, it started, I think, a few weeks back. We could already feel it. If you're sensitive to energy, you could already feel it. The 10th is the day, and the 10th is also the, the day that Jupiter switches signs. I think it goes into Aries, and apparently that is a big, huge, um, momentous step forward, and that makes sense, like Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. Jupiter's been in Pisces for a while, which is the last sign, so it makes sense that it's a new moving forward. And then we move into, towards the end of the week, we start feeling, you're going to start feeling the energy of the eclipse that's coming up on, I think it's Monday the 16th, the, um, this one's a lunar eclipse, which is a huge closing out, this one's in Scorpio, and um, it's just, it's all about death and rebirth, which plays into our card for today. So if you've been with us for a little while, and you may not remember because we've got, they're like, let me just throw out a shameless plug. We've, we've got um, a couple of different series going on on the show right now. So you could listen to this, you know, whenever. But we have um, a, the 777 series going on right now. There's a playlist for that in Spotify and YouTube. That's a mini healing retreat. And this week we'll be working with the third eye. So we've been coming up through the chakras we're working with the third eye and we're working with my book Powerball as a healing workbook for that series. And then last week we started a new series called Journey to Lionsgate. That is also um, in my recent uploads on my homepage of my, of my channel. And we've got three keys or three doors opening that fit different keys, fit three keys. And um, that is taking us from May, June, and July, and we're working with a different set of um, tools for that workshop. And then for this, we've been working with my in-progress Oracle deck. So I make quite a few Oracle decks. They're already out there if you're interested in any of that stuff. The decks, the books can be read for free. The eBooks can, the, can be read for free. Um, the workbooks, all that information is in the show notes of these videos, any services that I offer, all my services. I just saw 9-11, which to me on the counter here, which is um, Archangel Michael coming through talking about soul mission and soul purpose as part of this. Um, but all of, all of my services that I offer, 
um, healing services and so forth are on my website in the show notes as well too and let me just say that we are working with my yet to be create yet to be completed oracle deck loveland oracle as part of our week ahead um, readings and it's only on it's not a physical deck yet because I've not completed it, but the guides are like, you need to start working with this now. Well, they didn't say you need to like I had you or else, but they were like, you know, that would be kind of fun to start working with this now and just keep working on it. It's not a big deal. And so they said, just work on it in order. It's just still in the software that I use to create it. But they're like, don't, don't worry about shuffling it. Just work with it in the order that you created the cards. So this is the third card show it to you here in just a second that we'll be working with for this week's energy let me see if I can get close enough to the camera so this week <laughs> the overarching energy is called you don't own me I don't know, does that show backwards here so it's you don't own me there's a phoenix there's all sorts of stuff going on in this image in this illustration in this artwork and the card says like the phoenix rising Linnell pripped her hair and spritzed on bubblegum perfume she would go to the dance without Larry she was finally free so then I channeled the message so this will be what's in the book the guidebook for this card and then we're going to expand on that because this is what this week's energy is all about and we'll draw a couple more cards from a diff couple different decks I have, and then we'll do some shamanic Reiki at the end. Possibly some light language if that wants to come through too. So the card is, <clears throat> oh, my throat is so scratchy. How come every time I get on to talk to you guys, my throat is so darn scratchy? And it doesn't happen until I get on here. So it's either like, you guys need to, this week is about speaking your truth. Oh, yes. And with Mercury Retrograde. see magic coming through because I'm looking over here and there's like all this glitter on my bookshelf on the back of my bookshelf there's like gold glitter just like weird I didn't even know that was in there okay it's the shiny things again we've talked about getting lost in shiny things as part of 777 so okay stay focused <laughs> now had been alone okay so put on your put on your higher vibe um your vibe thinking cap put on your turn on your intuition and if there's metaphors in here so what what is metaphors and stuff might play out or or stand out to you as part of these stories and these cards so just take what resonates and leave the rest it's not meant for you if it doesn't resonate Linnell had been alone for quite some time now but she was still holding on to old feelings about her previous partner Larry she would dream of the life they could have had together and it brought up past hurts, regrets, should and would haves. Now Linnell had been doing quite a lot of work on herself and she knew that these old feelings were holding her back from moving forward. See, that's something backing up right there. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's something, no, 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 Shh. Okay, <laughs> so I had to actually stop share with you that in a minute let's just finish the card Linnell she'd been doing quite a lot of work on herself and she knew that these old feelings were holding her back from moving forward I need a new outlook she said to her French pet lop bunny Percival but Percival only looked on with bored amusement he had tried to telepathically tell his mistress that if she only moved forward rather than backwards <laughs> she would be fine. We were just saying that. But Linnell was hard to reach sometimes. And then it happened. Out of the blue, a huge awakening, sent from the celestial heavens, cleared out all the old feelings for Larry. And in that moment, Linnell was free. <laughs> I love it. Oh my God, and it's going to be 11 11. Oh, and it's 1. I had to restart this video. I'll tell you why, because I was sitting downstairs a few minutes ago, maybe about 20 minutes ago, and out of the blue, it is a little cloudy outside, but out of the blue, 
this huge clap of thunder. Like it sounded like a gunshot and all the power went out and came back on. And immediately it was like, reset the clocks. And um, I was like, wow, that was a huge reset. It just felt like a, and some part, it just felt like a thunder clap. Like, I mean, I was just sitting there perfectly fine. There was really no dark clouds that looked ominous and then that thing came. So now what's happening is uh, somebody, this is Sunday, I'm actually surprised someone's here, but someone from the, I guess an electric company, I'm not familiar with this town, but somebody with, a, I guess from the electric company comes and there's like this weird pole beside my house that has one of those speakers on it. And I guess if there's like some emergency warning or whatever, it's gonna say something, but this guy is going up there in like a, the bucket to go possibly maybe reset this pole or whatever. Maybe that's the thing that got struck by lightning. I don't know. It was very, it was very odd. He's going up on a huge crane. It's almost like, it's almost just like what we read, like something celestial comes in from the heavens and resets something. And he's like going way up there. He's going higher than my house. He's just right outside my window. That is crazy. And I guess he's gonna go up on that pole. Wicked, all right. So anyway, there's a lot happening. Um, there was a big distraction. The dog got all distracted. I got all distracted. I went to the other bedroom and looked out the window and I was distracted because I was like, what's he doing? And um, this is gonna be a very pivotal, we know it's a very pivotal time, but it's gonna be a very pivotal time. This morning when I went to take my shoes off, one of them just like flipped. Well, it didn't flip on its I think my foot hit it slightly, but it flipped on its own. And it was like one shoe was going forward and one shoe was going, I swear, like completely backwards. So there's this, it's like, you're gonna be working so much with dual energies this week. It's gonna be a little hard to stay focused because there's this, there's this endings and Phoenix rising stuff but at the same time, so there's this Mercury retrograde, but at the same time, there's this Jupiter and Aries thing happening at the exact same day. And it's really gonna feel kind of awkward, they're saying, this week. Um, that's why I've been listening to other way showers talk about this week really needing to slow down. And I'm like, well, typically we don't slow down. I don't anyway, when there's a full moon coming, I typically get a little bit more energized. But the message for this week is you really need to slow down and take it easy and allow all these integrations to happen because it's going to feel like this push-pull in your energy field, like going forward, nope, it's going backwards. And in certain aspects of your life, I think you are going to be like moving forward, but in other aspects, you're going to be like being called to go backwards. And it's stronger than usual because of the eclipse energy coming up. And so you just are gonna have to take it easy. Um, but Linnell being finally free, I think this, this week, these energies, you've been doing a lot of work on yourself. And the other thing that came through with this, I will have to say, is when I channeled in this bunny as her familiar, this Percival, I was like, okay, we're getting a new download from another um, Knights of the Round Table. So it's possible this month we may work with Percival. I don't know much about him, but we have worked with other knights before, so we could be doing a something through Sisters for the Sword, which, yes, you guys. <laughs> all these old series that I used to run, and I kind of stopped doing them, but we were doing Sisters for the Sword for quite some time, and then I just kind of, with working with Avalon and Merlin, and I just kind of set that aside. So it looks like that may be coming back this month. So things coming back, Mercury Retrograde is going to bring back stuff. I'm going to get my card decks. Mercury Retrograde is going to be bringing back some stuff for you to work with. What decks? Is this good enough? All right, so let me just, I know there's more messages. Let me just draw a couple more cards, and then we're going to do our Reiki. So I've got my deck. This is Palladium Power. Look at our candle. It's easily distracting. Let's see what it's doing in there. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, so let's just relax. Let's take another cup. 
Chocolate deep brass. <clears throat> See what else wants to come out in addition to You Don't Own Me. All right, so I've got two cards. I've got, so first we got You Don't Own Me. So there's a big thing happening. There's a big, huge shift, and it's going to be very quick, and I think it's all of these energies converging, converging with the eclipse, the Mercury retrograde, the Jupiter in Aries, and all these divine timing celestial events happening to kind of move you forward because you've done as much as you possibly can do working in your own energy field. Now it's just like this little push from the universe through the astrology that activ activates, activates, acts, activates, acts like cuts and restarts you kind of in a different way location. So the first card we got is Cassie the Heart Fairy. We get her a lot. So when you know where your heart is, when you feel the magic within, then all is right in your world. So again, being asked to stay in your heart space. I don't know where I want to put this there. <laughs> I'm just being goofy today too, right? Kind of goofy. And then the second card we got, our angels are trying to reach you. And then so we've got Linnell, You Don't Own Me, breaking out of um, past stuff. Things coming back from the past for reassessment through the Mercury retrograde. And as long as you're in your heart, then you're going to know the universe is going to be bringing you things to like reevaluate. So like I said, Sisters for the Swords seems to be popping back in again. And it's popped in a few days ago too. It was like, remember Sisters for the Sword and how you really like doing that? And Merlin showed up a few days before that and he was like, you know, he wasn't saying like come back to Avalon or anything like that, but it was kind of like, remember how much we liked working together? And remember Sisters for the Sword? And I was like, yeah, okay. So now the, that, you know, stuff like that could be coming back, but you still got to feel it in your heart space just because it shows up in your reality, whether it be an intuitive download or whether it be something in your physicality, doesn't mean that just because the divine sent it, it doesn't mean you have to like run with it. Um, if you still feel it in your heart, then go with it. And if not, then you've reevaluated it and you either are going to work with it or you're going to put that to rest and say, you know, I'm, I'm no longer, that's no longer it's like my intention. Um, so like with Sisters for the Sword, I'm kind of like, well, I don't know if I want to do anything with that anymore or not. So, I mean, I'll seriously look at it. I'll sit with it. I'll listen to the, you know, evaluate the downloads that are coming in about it. See if the, if it works with some of the stuff that we're currently working on, because I know a lot of you work a lot through the content on this show and you go back and forth and you revisit things and you have, I think each one of you has your favorite like series. You know, some people work with 555 a lot. A lot of people are working with the 777 workshop right now. You know, and maybe another one is just going to be too much, <laughs> too much. Uh, <laughs> they're saying it's never too much, it's never too much. So maybe, you know, I know some of you really like working with the Knights and the Sisters for the Sword stuff too. And so angels are trying to reach you this week. They are trying to help out. They are trying to divinely intervene. There is divine timing at play. Uh, messages come from all sorts of different sources. You know, they come from your, through your crown. They come through music. They come through your heart. You know, they're going to try to reach you in whatever way is most comfortable for you. And so just be open to that. Take it easy. Get really quiet. I know this morning I wanted the house like super, super quiet. I usually have the TV playing in the background with some sort of nature sounds or something from YouTube. And even this morning I had the TV off and I had my own windows open and I was like, oh my God, I have amazing, amazing nature sounds here. And finally here, I think spring has finally sprung in this, what do, you, what do we call this? Is this like the Northern Plains? What is North Dakota? I don't know. It's, I guess, the Northern Plains. So the weather is very conducive to, to being outside for a little bit. It's, it's, I guess, what you would call typical spring weather that I'm used to seeing maybe late February, early March-ish, where I used to live in the south. And, of course, hello, I moved, like, halfway across the thing. So it's only right that I'm 
it takes a little bit longer down. Where am I? Down here? Okay. Up here. This is a very beautiful place. I do have to say, I know I'm not my qualms about it, but it is very, like, the land and the nature and everything up here is very, very beautiful. I just am not a fan of harsh weather. Okay. The next card we're going to draw and then we're going to do our healing is Oracle of Light and Dreams, my new favorite deck. If I ever met Scott Howden, he's definitely got to be a soul brother. He just, his art just like speaks to me so much. All right, let's see what the Oracle of Light and Dreams has to say for this week. We've got two. Ah, yes. I love this one. Winter Solstice, which makes sense. Oh, well, no wonder we've got two. We've got a looking, we've got a review, reassess going on and we've got the moving forward going on so this is the reflective time of the mercury retrograde looking back it's also a closing out energy um, this eclipse as well that's coming up it's time to just look back through what's being presented to you and decide are these things still right for me? Do I want to take them moving forward? And it is card number 11. I love this card. Just everything about it. I do want to read. I like reading his little things. So let's see. We have take time to celebrate. Rejoice, honor, self-reflection, rebirth. In a secret and magical dell. I swear we could work together. <laughs> I mean, this guy, because he does the stories like me. An ethereal elven fawn enjoys the serenity as the delicate snowflakes dance in the half light and wrap around her in a soft embrace. Her fine festive winter dress with its intricate spun gold embroidery along with the vibrant poinsettia and decorative hair adornments reflect the significance of the winter solstice. It is a time of reflection and renewal as well as a time to celebrate the moon and the longest hours of darkness. We can harness the power of ceremony and celebration to create positive change and healing in our lives. And then the quote is from Cho Chocolat, Joanne Harris, life is what you celebrate, all of it, even its end. Beautiful. And the bookend energy, oh, it's perfect. I love this one too. The bookend energy to that, the moving forward energy is also a card number one. It's a 10, well, it's a 46, which is a one, Toyland. So inner child, love it. All right, this one is, let's see, 46. Is that the last card in the deck? No, there's more. Toyland, obviously, take time to play. Imagination, creativity, joy, and spontaneity. This card represents play and the imaginative and creative forces that are engaged when we participate in playful activities. And the quote is Carl Jung, the great joy of play, fantasy, and imagination is that for a time we are utterly spontaneous, free to imagine anything. In such a state of pure being, no thought is unthinkable and nothing is imaginable. And then it says, whether it is kicking a ball in the park, sharing a joke, playing fetch with a dog, or countless other activities, play is something that we should all make time for. So yay, and in addition to moving forward, going backwards, <laughs> take it easy on yourself, allow yourself time to rest and rejuvenate, and play, have some fun, do something fun. Aw, that teddy bear, he's so cute. I love that. All right. So now we are going to, so I think that's, that's enough of what's going on this week. It's already making me tired just thinking about it. Now we're going to do some shamanic Reiki and see what, that's very interesting because I'm looking at the shadow of this candle you can't see it but the shadow of this candle is like down on the floor there's some sunlight and it's like the tower's burning the smoke it's not even smoke it's like it's like smoke in the shadow but you can't really see it here maybe it's the heat
heat from the candle. That's very interesting what that's doing. All right, so what I have here, let's see, what do we want to do? We're gonna work with a feather. So I've got some of my feathers, some of the larger ones. I'm just going to kind of close my eyes and let whatever wants to come to me, come to me. So get yourself settled. We're gonna do a little bit of blinking. Oh, I got the owl feather. Oh my, got the owl feather. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of working on your third eye. So we're gonna let owls, so let's just breathe. Let owl come in and clear away anything that's keeping you from seeing with your heart. It's not just the third eye though. So let's just, the heart space needs clearing. And the overactive thinking mind that tends to rationalize things. So that's true. So just like what I did there, it's like, I like Sisters for the Sword, so why do I need to rationalize whether I need to bring it back or not? Like, so I was like saying like, oh, maybe some of you won't care to work with it or whatever. It's like, well, wait, I like doing it. Why do I need to rationalize it away? So that's kind of what we're talking about, and it happens very subtly sometimes. These things sneak in through our mental body from past experience. So think like the owl who uses all senses all her senses and her big wide eyes she can look forward she can turn her head or look all the way look backwards but looking from the heart using your sixth senses your sixth sixth senses not your six senses but using like your intuition your clear audience your clairvoyance I'm bring in a crystal. I'm just going to stick my hand in my big crystal bucket of crystals and just draw out one that wants to do some crystal Reiki with us. Oh, it's a little like a birthstone. Alright, so we're going to be sending some healing energy from Mother Gaia. Let's see, how does this We've got some really old
in und Hund in und in e ha tja hat hier an dir an schön dir ach geh an die Hütte zum Beispiel Hui mir very emotional. Ooh. That was like fuck. That was like elder dragons. Like oh, I just keep calling them like ancestor dragons. Like ones that have been embedded in the core of Gaia. Since the beginning of time, they're saying, wow. Oh, it's very powerful. Some of you just may, like, I'm crying a lot, so some of you may be very emotional right now. It's just bringing up, like, a lot of um, past life remembering. Like, you may have worked with similar energies before so i think during this retrograde this next week that kind of stuff is going to get triggered too not triggered in a bad way but coming up for you as in terms of new um new energies that you're connecting with but you're remembering like oh my this feels so familiar like i feel like i've worked with this before um i feel like i've worked with these energies before and so what may be like new guides introducing themselves to you it's really just like oh, yeah like old friends coming back to work with you again so let me just take one more look at our candle oh oh shit i don't want to touch it it's spewing it's like you can't see it oh shit it's spewing a lot of wax out the side so that, that was a huge huge release i mean wax is basically like there's a hole it's, I've never seen a candle do this before. Oh my god, I want you guys to see it so bad. It's almost like it's being. Uh, the wax, so it developed a huge hole in the side. Can you guys see that? Oh my god, I'm gonna try to film on this one. I'm like afraid to move it. I just want you to see it. Oh, that was a huge release. It like spewed a hole in the side there. And all this wax was, it's not even up here. It's like the hole is down here. That was a huge release. And so now it's going to make a new shape. I wonder if it's going to make like the back of the dragon. I don't know. It's crazy. I watch kind of what it does. And the flame is ginormous in there. Okay. So that was a huge, huge, that was a huge release. I've never seen, I've never seen, I mean, it was basically shooting out like a stream. Okay, let's blow it out here. I don't want to blow it out till it's done doing what it's going to do. So I'm going to let it burn. And then the next time I talk to you guys, or I may take a picture of it and post it on my Insta or something. So we can see what shape it it did. <gasps> don't fall over. It won't burn me. It's still spewing out wax. It probably will until I blow it out. Okay, I'm going to let the guys tell me when to blow it out. Or anyway, all right. So this is very powerful, powerful next week, week ahead. Whenever you're watching this, stay in your heart space, stay tuned in and um, just allow what's going to come up for you to come up for you, whether it's to be released, reassessed, rebirthed, renewed, um, reevaluated, and rem remember to get some rest, child's play, and just try to have fun with all of these energies. So that's all we have for now. I want to thank you all so much for joining me. Take care.